I'm really excited about this today because we are talking about a scientific piece of technology that affects your life in a massive way, but you probably don't even know it exists. We are talking about heat pipes and their application, their history, and where it's going. This is really cool. Let's go. All right, so what is a heat pipe? Well, a heat pipe is something that transfers heat from one location to another location so that it can be gotten rid of, and it does so very, very efficiently. So the most common application of heat pipes is within computers, because there are certain components of computers like CPUs and GPUs that get very, very hot. And left to themselves, they would actually just work and work and work until they melted themselves and were a useless piece of garbage. So thankfully, they don't do that because of heat pipes. Now, we're going to talk about some of the cool applications of heat pipes later on, but for now, let's do a little bit of a demonstration. I have two very similar copper pipes. This one is made out of pure copper. This one is made out of pure copper, but it is a heat pipe, and we'll tell you exactly what they're made of later. So now we get to try and show you exactly how efficient these heat pipes are. So if I push down on this ice cube with a copper pipe, not much is going to happen. And yeah, it's, it's melting a little bit. All right, now let's try the heat pipe. All right, I'm just going to, using only my body heat, I'm going to just put it onto the ice cube. Now, I can feel this is instantaneously cold. Like, this is, feels like I'm holding a block of ice. But my body heat, look at that. It is melting through that ice cube so quickly. Using nothing but my body heat. Wow. Let's change angles. We'll get some close-ups here. All right. So this one is gonna be the copper pipe. This is the heat pipe. Now I'm pushing down with the same amount of pressure. So right now the heat pipe is incredibly cold in my hands, whereas the copper pipe feels just like a normal piece of metal. Look at that, eh? Like there's no comparison of which one is melting faster. And there we go. So now this is just, look at the difference there. So now heat pipes can be, if they're made correctly, be up to a thousand times more efficient at thermal, thermal dissipation than just the normal material like copper. It's so cool. Let's talk about what a heat pipe actually is. So this is a copper and water heat pipe. So this copper heat pipe has been vacuum sealed. There's very, very low pressure inside of this little pipe. And there's a little bit of working fluid, in this case, water. Now there's liquid water running all the way along the inside of this pipe, just a little tiny bit. Now say this end got heated up or got warmed up. Now that warmth, that heat, will turn that liquid water into a vapor, and that vapor absorbs the thermal energy. The very act of turning from a liquid to a vapor absorbs thermal energy. Now because it's low pressure, it travels almost instantaneously, very, very quickly, to the other end. Now it's this other end, we can put a larger cooling unit or a fan, and we can blow across there and cool that vapor that condenses back into a water, and the water flows back to the other end, which then repeats the process. This is a very, very efficient way to remove heat from one source to the other end of a heat pipe. It's really cool. Now let's take a look at this. So I took this out of a laptop, and this is actually what they use it for. This is where the CPU was, which gets fairly warm, and this is a heat pipe that travels all the way along here, to this unit with a fan over top of it. And it is air cooled, which means as the CPU gets hotter and hotter, that condenses the liquid, or that, uh, that vaporizes the water that's inside this copper heat pipe, which then travels all the way across the other end where the fan is, which condenses the liquid. The liquid travels back and it's a cycle. 
Now these things are completely maintenance free. You never have to fix them. They will last for 20 plus years. They have no moving parts and very durable. These things are amazing. If we didn't have these, we wouldn't have the types of computers that we have now. Now let's get into the history of where heat pipes came from. It all started back in 18. 39, I believe, with A. March Perkins, where he first developed a patent for the first most rudimentary heat pipe, where he theorized a bunch of stuff and it was a rough market and there was no application for it. His descendant, almost 100 years later, Jacob Perkins, pulled his own patent called the Jacob's Pipe. And again, this was a, a similar type of function where he theorized that he could add in a liquid to aid in the heat transfer, but it didn't really pan out. He dropped it after a couple of years. Ten years later, R.S. Gogler, working for General Motors at the time, came up with the heat pipe that we use today, but there wasn't very many applications for it because really, computers were the thing that really took it off uh, and there weren't very many computers in 1946, or 1944 rather. It was rediscovered in 1963 by George Grover. And that is the heat pipe that we have today, the copper and water pipe. Now the technology has been improved on massively. So in the beginning, it was just a pipe that was gravity fed. So it had to be on an angle where the liquid would vaporize, go to the top, cool off, and it would be gravity fed downwards. Now we have many different types of heat pipes. So these heat pipes that I have here are kind of feathered on the inside, which means that they don't need to be gravity fed. When the liquid vaporizes and condenses on the other end, it is actually the wicking action that brings the moisture, the liquid water, through the pipe back to be vaporized again. So this can work even in zero Gs. So what are some of the limitations of heat pipes? Well, heat pipes are limited by the liquid that is inside them. So for example, this heat pipe, which is copper and water, will work very well in the working temperature of water. So if we were to try and use a heat pipe at, I don't know, negative 20 degrees Celsius, nothing would happen because the water is frozen. So you have to change the liquid that you use and sometimes the material depending on the temperature you want cooled. So in the most extreme cases, if you want to cool something down to close to zero degrees Kelvin, like absolute zero, you'd want to use liquid helium in a heat pipe like this and then use something like aluminum as the casing structure. Then you can use the properties of liquid helium to just cool it off the same as you would cool a computer. Heat pipes themselves are used in a huge variety of technology today. Computers, of course, that's where it's kind of the bread and butter. If we didn't have those, we wouldn't have modern computers as we have them today. So what else can we use them for? Well, there are some cool applications with nuclear reactors where we can remove the heat if suddenly the power went down and we're facing a meltdown. You could use certain types of heat pipes to remove the heat and cool it with air-cooled nuclear reactors. Kind of scary thought, but still it can be used. A cool one is in the Alaska pipelines. So the pipelines that carry oil through Alaska are on permafrost. So this is the layer that never melts throughout the years. However, pipelines create a little bit of heat. So it might be the latent heat of the oil traveling through the pipe or the friction of the oil passing through the pipe that can transfer through the supports down to the permafrost and melt the permafrost and cause the pipeline to break, which is bad news. So they have heat pipes run running down through the permafrost at every single stanchion of this permafrost pipeline. And what that does is during the summer, it uses the heat that the pipeline creates to actually cool the permafrost so that it doesn't melt. Very fascinating application of this technology. Another big one is communication satellites. So in space, you can't really afford to just throw power at, say, cooling units or fans or things like that. So they use a complicated version of heat pipes to allow the heat transfer from the important instruments so it doesn't overheat and melt itself down. I hope this has been educational. This has just been a very brief overview of heat pipes and the scientific tech that powers a lot of the aspects of your life. It's very cool. This is Destructive Creativity. If you like this, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. It helps us out a lot. 
and hit that bell icon as well. Apparently I don't tell people that enough. Anyways, see you next time. I'm Jonathan Allers for Destructive Creativity. Bye!